NADPH homeostasis regulation. Most of the students at Georgia Tech do not struggle to find enough food to survive. All the food we eat, like apples, steak, coffee, and pasta, is eventually broken down into molecules a million times smaller than the pieces we put in our mouth. The cellular respiration occurring inside the cells in our body have been providing energy for us humans and other organisms since the beginning of life on Earth. Cellular respiration consists of three parts, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. Glycolysis is derived from a Latin phrase meaning splitting sugars. It is the metabolic process by which glucose is broken down into usable energy. Glucose, a six-carbon sugar, is broken down into two smaller three-carbon sugars called pyruvate. Glycolysis can happen in the presence of oxygen, aerobic or not anaerobic. In the presence of oxygen, glycolysis is the first of three steps of cellular respiration. When no oxygen is present, it is called fermentation. The citric acid cycle is a continuation of the glycolysis cycle. The two sugars from the glycolysis cycle are converted to a slightly different compound called acetyl-CoA. The cycle also produces compounds with electron storage capability, such as NAD and FAD, as well as energy in the form of ATP and occasionally GTP. Although the cycle itself does not use oxygen directly, oxygen must be present for the process to work. The electron transport chain is composed of a series of electron carriers in the membrane of the mitochondria in the cells. Through a series of reduction-oxidation reactions, high-energy electrons are passed from NADH and FADH2 to oxygen. Ultimately, the electron gradient is produced along with ATP. Glycolysis is divided into two separate stages. The first stage is energy investment, and the second is energy generation. The cycle has a net production of two molecules of ATP, two molecules of pyruvic acid, and two molecules of NADH. The first five steps of glycolysis make up the first stage, energy investment. First, a phosphate group is transferred from a molecule of ATP to the glucose in the cell cytoplasm in a phosphorylation reaction. The second is an isomerization of glucose, 6-phosphate, into fructose, 6-phosphate. Third, in another phosphorylation reaction, a second ATP donates a phosphate group to the fructose. The enzyme aldolase then splits the molecule into two 3-carbon sugars. These three carbon sugars are isomers of each other. The two isomers created in the previous step, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde phosphate, rapidly interconvert between themselves. The isomerization favors the formation of glyceraldehyde phosphate as it is an isomer used in the subsequent steps of glycolysis. Once stage one is completed, the cycle moves into stage two energy generation. First, a reduction-oxidation reaction occurs involving glyceraldehyde and the oxidizing agent NAD+. The D-phosphorylation step occurs and a phosphate is removed from the sugar and added to ADP to produce the first ATP. Because there are now twice as many sugars in the cycle, two ATPs are produced. Then, the enzyme phosphoglyceromutase relocates a phosphate from carbon-3 to carbon-2. Next, the enzyme enolase removes a molecule of water from 2-phosphoglycerate to form phosphonopyruvic acid, known as PEP. This reaction occurs for each molecule of 2-phosphoglycerate. Finally, the sugar loses a phosphate to ADP molecules to form 2 ATP and pyruvic acid. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. You can think of it as energy currency used in the biological world. When energy is needed, a phosphate bond is broken and ATP becomes ADP or adenosine diphosphate. 
Another phosphate bond can be broken more when more energy is needed to give AMP, or adenosine monophosphate. This is the smallest form that a molecule can assume. NADH is a high-energy non-electron carrier. It is often talked about in conjunction with its oxidized form, NADH+. NADH and NADH+, participate in important redox reactions involved in metabolism, such as affermented process of cellular respiration. When cells are under stress, it is more difficult for them to undergo metabolism and produce enough NADPH, which differs from NADH because it has one extra phosphate group to fulfill the energy needed in the cell. In tumor cells, AMPK, or adenosine monophosphate kinase, has been found to regulate NADPH homeostasis to promote cell survival. AMPK is an AMP-activated protein kinase. AMPK can detect when the cell has large amounts of AMP present and not enough ATP. When ATP levels are low and NADPH generation via pentose phosphate pathway are impaired, AMPK is triggered into action. AMPK uses reduction oxidation reactions to create alternative routes to maintain levels of NADPH. AMPK also inhibits NADPH consumption by acetal-CoA. These efforts together help inhibit cell death by starvation. The lack of either LKB1 or AMPK activation rendered cancer cells more sensitive to cell death induced by glucose deprivation. In summary, ATP and NADH are generated by the metabolic processes of cellular respiration. In tumor cells, AMPK can detect when the cell is running low on energy and uses redox reactions to set up alternate pathways for metabolism to maintain levels of NADH to inhibit cell death.